Alright guys, thank you for tuning in to the video today. Uh, we're going to be doing some 5 speed rebuild video today. The infamous Subaru 5MT. Um, the glass gearbox. Um, uh, this one, I've always said that the Legacy GT gear set is stronger than the WRX gear set in you know the previous years. And that's true. The gears are bigger, teeth are bigger, but evidently uh, the 180,000 mile five speed that's in my Outback uh, couldn't handle the 430 horsepower mark, which, you know, is not surprising, a little disappointing, but uh, it held up at 320 wheel horsepower for a long time with a lot of abuse and it held up really good. Uh, and to be honest with you guys, I thought first gear was going to go out, if anything. I thought it was going to blow up first gear because of how I launched the car. But first gear looks beautiful. Nothing's wrong with it. Uh, third gear is the one that went out. If you go check out my previous video, I explained what happened, but um, it wasn't it wasn't a like hard shift from second to third and then third blew up. It was shifted from second to third. I was in third gear doing full throttle and it blew up, just shattered. So it was a full on power strip, just gear just got stripped out. So this, this is what we're dealing with here. This is the third, I don't know if this is the driving gear or whatever, but that's the third gear on the main shaft. Completely, no more teeth left, completely white. And then this is third gear on the pinion shaft, and it's got a few teeth left. Um, very few, but uh, most of them are white clean too. So this is, let's see, this is the bag of teeth that came out of the transmission. So lots of shrapnel. Um, but everything else is fine. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be removing the third and fourth gears on both of these because I got some new ones down here. And then removing all the gears off here. We're sending out first and second gear, driving and the counter gears to uh, get WPC treated, which if you don't know is basically uh, it's shot painting, but it has like a added layer of like friction re resistance or it, it reduces the friction. A lot of uh, racing teams use this technology uh, to make their parts stronger and friction resistant or frictionless. I'm not really worried about the friction part because these are gears, they're not sliding metals. So uh, that doesn't really concern me, but the fact that the WPC treatment has shown to make parts stronger is what I'm mainly focused on because I'm trying to make this uh, five speed last until I can save up for a six speed. So that's what we're going to be working on today. So uh, let's get tearing into it. So if you take a look here, I already started disassembling the pinion shaft. I took the nut off and that was it. Uh, and all the nuts, they have like a little hammer mark to, you know, lock them in place. And you got to unhammer those. And this one kind of got messed up cracked so I'm just gonna buy a new nut probably like two dollars or something stupid like that so I'm just gonna keep a part list of you know things I find that I need to replace so that I have you know have what I need to put it back together when the time comes now there are lots and lots of specialty tools to take apart this stuff uh, and if you have them that would be very nice but I don't so to get this off what I did was I took this rag and I put it on some channel locks and I squeezed it real hard just so that I knew it wouldn't slip. Uh, and then after, uh, once I was squeezing it to make sure it wouldn't slip, I got the impact and just gently impacted this off. Uh, just, you know, gentle hammering so it doesn't spin the splines on the, the channel locks. I didn't want to strip these out. And... I didn't do any real damage to these. There's like maybe like little pieces that came off, but the spline should still go in and there shouldn't be an issue with it. So we're gonna continue disassembly. Um, I don't know how far I'm gonna get today because I need to get some more tools. But uh, for this one, I need a 35 mil socket that fits in here. So I have to order one of those. And then this one needs a 50 millimeter socket. So it's a big boy, um, but it'll all be in the same video. So. I'm just going to disassemble this, set this out nicely, clean everything up as I go, uh, make sure I keep track of the order of the parts so I can put them back together right. Well, I guess this is good. Um, if this, if you damage this part, 
taking it off you could put a new one on it looks like because this is a separate piece that you can buy there we go like that so this is a thrust washer bearing and then you have that there we go so now that the nut is off of uh, this end right here what we can do is we can slide out this uh, pinion and there's a spacer and a needle bearing in there this is on the pinion side this is on the nut side and then you can pull this out and then we have a bearing a washer a flat needle bearing and then one of these needle bearings so I'm gonna lay these out so I remember where they go so now for the main shaft um, you can see I already took the peening off of the nut here um, and then there's this little I don't know what this thing's called but there's a split ring holding it on so if I take that split ring out I should be able to fit uh, my socket on here and get this nut off alright so there's the split ring out and then this should just come off like that now let's see if this goes on and it does beautifully so uh, let me grab my impact and we'll take this off it wasn't filming when it came off but uh, it came off pretty easy so there's a washer so let's pull on this just keep track of everything okay so that is one piece I'm gonna leave these together just because I don't want to lose track of where they go and they all seem to be one piece so we'll leave these together but um, this is I think it looks like the synchro I don't know the names I think it's called like a Bach ring or something but this is the uh, the part that goes to the shift fork and that slides over there and there's teeth on it um, and that's how it locks in fifth gear. Okay, now this comes off. Okay, now let's see. Fifth gear comes off. Okay, so I got the 50 millimeter socket. I might have to clamp this in the vise if this doesn't work, but I'm gonna just try to hold it and see if I can take it off. God dang, let me get some better gloves. Starting to move. Um, I couldn't remove the uh, the peening on this one because I just couldn't, but um, so let's see what I can do this. There we go. Thank you. Oh, it, it's it's just like twenty tons of pressure on it. So. Oh my God. It moved. It no, it didn't. No, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't move. No. No, the, the, it went down. Compressing the wood at this point. I think the wood's the problem. Alright, guys, so you probably seen in the last clip um, there was a pop, camera died, so I didn't film the rest of it. But um, there's a couple things I learned while trying to disassemble these uh, gear sets that uh, I'm going to tell you guys so you don't make the same mistakes I do if you decide to do this yourself. So, just to start out, here's everything laid out. This is um, all the stuff from the main shaft. This is the front, that's the back. And then this is the stuff from the pinion shaft. This is the front, and then it goes down here to the back. There's just a lot more stuff. But um, I broke a few things. This I didn't break, but these bearings, um, you can see maybe like right up here, it's a little dented from pressing it off. They don't roll the smoothest anymore since I think they got damaged during the pressing. Probably need to be replaced anyways. They have 180,000 miles on them. And then down here, this one I broke. So you can see, this probably would normally work, but I put it in the press with the ears right here on the, the holder for the hydraulic press. And they it snapped the ears off, so I need to get a new one of these. But I'll show you where I went wrong. You can see there's a little spot for a woodruff key that goes right there and then there's a spot for one right here this is where third and fourth gear goes and then right here is where that bearing that i broke rides 
and then fifth gears up here and that's what this uh, woodruff key is for this holds fifth gear in place so what i was trying to do uh in the factory service manual you're supposed to pull fifth gear off first but i didn't have anything that i could safely grab on to fifth gear without damaging it so i was like okay well i'll just take third and fourth gear off plus the bearing and fifth gear at the same time but this woodruff key sticking out of here it prevents the um bearing from coming off so that's why you're supposed to remove fifth gear first you move fifth gear pull the woodruff key out and then you can pull off third fourth and the bearing so i was just pressing it off with third fourth bearing and fifth gear and it ended up um the woodruff key ended up splitting the bearing yeah so there was a really loud bang and uh you could see the crack right by where it says koyo between the k and the o there's a crack right there it just split the whole inner race of the bearing um and then fifth gear came off so i pulled fifth gear off and then i seen that it was split right here so then i pushed down the bearing again pulled the woodruff key out and then it all came off nicely so if you're gonna do this make sure you take off fifth gear first i don't know how to take it off without damaging it but i'm thinking that it's probably cheaper to buy a new fifth gear than it is to buy a new bearing because that bearing was 172 dollars and i'm pretty sure fifth gear would be cheaper because third and fourth gear both of the bearings the drive and the counter bearings was only 250 no not even 250 like 220 so it's probably cheaper to replace fifth gear if you damage it taking it off than it is to replace that bearing but if the bearing's old anyways might as well replace it so but yeah i learned that all the stuff right here came off relatively nicely like i said the bearing got damaged a little bit so we're gonna replace that just to be safe uh so we don't have to go back into here and i tried to keep track of all this stuff the best i could but as you can see there's a lot of pieces parts that just fell out um but i'll try to upload some some of the uh, factory service manual diagrams that i'm using so if you guys want to look at this you can um they help out a lot first gear uh reverse second gear is on the main shaft so i'm sending the whole main shaft out to get wpc treated and as well as second gear first gear the new third and fourth gear um counter and drive gears uh and so all that stuff's gonna get treated except fifth gear because i don't really care about fifth gear to be honest but uh uh it's just a I know that the, the gears that are most likely to break are third again and probably first because of how I launch it, but this could be completely wrong. I don't know, but this is first gear and you can see it kind of has a black color and then this is second gear, not black, just normal metal color. Uh, I think first gear in the Legacy GTs and Outback XTs is uh, nitrated, so it's a different type of hardening. Uh, it makes it stronger. It's like a heat treating process, but it's stronger than normal just regular heat treating like this would be because it like Impregnates nitrate into the surface making it harder something like that um, But I want to get it WPC treated on top of that to make it even stronger and uh, Hopefully This will stay together. That's gonna be the next part is sending some of these parts out and I'll be back once I get them back and we're ready to start assembling them. Alright guys, so I just got the WPC treated parts back, which was um, first through fourth gear and the main shaft. Uh, and they look really good. They look brand new. Uh, I'm obviously third and fourth are brand new, but um, first and second, they all look brand new. I'm really happy with the way it looks uh, and feels. It feels very smooth. So let me show you what we got. Um, they packaged them up all nicely like this for me. Uh, I unwrapped the main shaft so you guys can take a look at it um it's got this like i don't know like matte finish to it but um it's super slick like all the parts you feel they're really slick I and mean, that's probably just the frictionless part of it but i mean it cleaned everything up nicely everything's really smooth and yeah this part looks brand new now couldn't tell it this has 180,000 miles on it uh, and I'm going to unwrap all these and I'll show you guys those in a second. Alright, so here's a better look. Um, all the gears just look brand new. This is the fifth gear, untreated for reference. 
just looks like a normal gear but uh yeah all these are very nice hopefully it comes across in the video um and yeah like this is the bearing surface and it, and it feels like pretty slick um but yeah all these are done up nice so i'm gonna start putting these back together So we got the gear sets back together with the new gears, new bearings and everything. So I'm gonna discuss a couple of the things I did real quick. So first thing, I made some tools in order to press the uh, the new components on. And uh, you probably seen me in the beginning using a hammer. Uh, that's just cause I was trying to get it done and see if it works. And it does work for the smaller things that have less, you know, tensile force um, that you have to press down. But once you get to like the actual gears, there's so much force needed that the press just works way better and I ended up getting a press. Um, so that being said, just, just, just use a press. It's, it's way easier. Uh, and it's probably better on the components too, but, um, I don't want to spend that kind of money on tools. So I just decided to make my own and I've used this technique. A couple of times and it works very well and it worked very well in this case these are pvc plugs not pvc caps this is a pvc cap um, but these are pvc plugs so they're, they're meant to go into a certain diameter pipe uh, so they have a flat top and that's what you want so what i did was is i found out what the outer diameter i needed to slide over these shafts was so i got a size bigger than that for this um this shaft right here um the outer diameter was 1.25 so i bought a one and a half inch pvc cap so i have some shelf room there you know and then i drilled a one inch hole which or one 1.25 inch hole which was the diameter 
so that this slides over the shaft perfectly and then it makes contact with whatever I'm trying to press down perfectly and then depending on how uh, far the shaft sticks out past whatever I'm trying to press in I can just get a piece of PVC pipe and cut it whatever length I need to, to you know spread that distance without bottoming out on the end and then put a PVC cap on it and then I can just press it down so that's what I did so I had these two made this one was for the uh, the bigger one the pinion shaft and then I have this which I used to press it on and this is a two inch cap that I drilled a I think one and three quarters inch hole in it to go over here so this one's a bit sloppier but you know I was limited by my hole saws um, but it works great there's a plenty of shelf room to press on um, the PVC caps were strong enough the pipes were strong enough uh, and then this was the other one that I made but if you're gonna try to do this I would highly recommend doing that method because it's all this stuff only cost me maybe ten dollars really easy cheap tools to make um, obviously you need a press there's no way of getting around it so the press I got was 200 bucks so not too bad and I'll probably use it on some other things and then you probably also seen me using an impact to tighten these nuts and there's a reason for that um, so this big 50 millimeter nut right up here the torque for this one is 191 foot-pounds of torque now to to get that much torque on something you can't have it spinning and this spins so I'd have to clamp this somehow and I can't put this in my bench vise because there's so much hanging off of this. So I, there's no way that I could clamp this safely and not damage anything and have it actually even hold to that kind of rotational pressure. Uh, what I did was is I just used my impact. I looked it up. This impact with a full charge battery of this size, max 350 foot pounds of torque in speed setting two. So I put it, or in speed setting one, sorry. So I put it in speed setting one and I hammered it a bit. I didn't go like till it stopped moving because I knew that would be like probably 350 foot pounds. So if I was aiming for 200, I just kind of until it like kind of was barely moving. And then I was like, all right, that's probably good. Um, not the right way to do it for for sure. But uh, I don't, I'm not afraid of it backing off. Uh, I'm assuming that the, you know, compressive force is uh, okay. And then uh, I also have to key this uh, the nut so it's not going to back off because of the key Now um, the problems even worse for this one obviously, but this one um, You can hold the shaft you could probably clamp this one easier, but the torque spec for these are 88 foot-pounds um, But this one spins real easy, so there's no way to clamp that uh, I tried holding on to this with the channel locks like I did before and using a torque wrench But that didn't work. So what I did was I got some torque sticks, and these are very controversial, but uh, just to be sure, I checked, I, I tried it on the car, on the lug nuts real quick to see if it actually was accurate. So I used this 80 foot pound, um, this 80 foot pound one, and I put it on the impact, and I impacted it, and then I checked, checked it on the lug nut with the torque spec, with the torque wrench, and it was accurate, so. I did this on them, 80 foot pounds, and then I gave it a little extra after that just to get to that, you know, 88 range. Um, so this one, uh, it should be pretty accurate. Um, and then again, I got to key those ones too, so I'm not worried about them backing off. Uh, so hopefully this works. And if it doesn't work, we'll figure that out. Um, but uh, I think we should be fine. Uh, if it's gonna fail, it's probably gonna be for some other reason, uh, but I have faith that this will work out. So now we just gotta get everything back into here. I do need to um, make sure the pinion depth is correct with the shims. So I'll be doing that. I'll show you how I'm doing that. Um, but the way they do it from the factory is, is you pull this diff out. There's a plate that goes in here. You put the pinion shaft in, measure the distance from like a set point on the plate and that's how you get your correct pinion depth. Um, but I don't have that plate and I don't really feel like making one of those plates. So I'm going to do it the old school way, um, and I'm just going to do the paint, the Peruvian blue or whatever, this is, or Prussian blue. Put some paint on the gear, check the teeth alignment, um, and then the backlash I shouldn't have to adjust because I did not 
change the bearings or races on the diff and I did not adjust the uh, adjusters right here where the the race sits so the bit the backlash should be set I'll double check it but I'm pretty sure it'll be fine hopefully this shows up on camera uh, I did the uh, paint test on the diff to make sure the alignment was correct uh, I just reinstalled the shims that were uh, on there when I took this apart and since the pinion and everything is the same except like the bearings and stuff I assumed it would be the right distance since the diff and the pinion are all the same so you can see where I applied the paint and you can see the spots where it's contacting is dead center of the ring gear which is where you want and then also on the coast side they're also dead center so uh, I think this is good I shouldn't have to do any adjustments um, yeah everything looks looks good to my knowledge so I think we'll be able to run with it Transmissions back together. Um, a little bit of a pain. Uh, I did it off camera. I'm gonna try to stay out of the way for this. Um, but so you can see the transmission's in neutral, moving side to side. So if I pull it this way and push it in, that's first gear. And you can see the output shaft turning. And then holding it this way. Pull it all the way back, that's second gear. And you see the output shaft spinning. And then forward, neutral, straight forward, third gear. Oh, got a bit of resistance. And then straight back, fourth gear. And then forward, neutral, fifth gear. Oops. Didn't go in. I think that's in. Yeah, fifth gear. And then neutral. There we go. That's reverse. So you can see it's spinning the other direction. So on the bench, it's working. Okay, so the transmission is working beautifully. video is helpful for some of you um, if five speeds aren't your thing stay tuned for future videos I'll be putting a six speed in the car 
So uh, if you're interested in how to do a six speed swap and all the stuff you need to do it, um, go hit the subscribe button so you get notified when that video comes out. I'm hoping to be starting on the six speed swap in the next couple of months, um, but we'll see how that goes. So hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.